Mathematical representation of differential equation. We have a simple equation dy or dx plus x squared times y equals to zero. It is a differential equation. How we know that? Let's have a glimpse back to the previous lecture. According to the first definition that we had, an equation having function and one or more of its derivatives is a differential equation. So according to the first definition, we have a derivative term here which is dy or dx and therefore it is a differential equation. The second definition was an equation that relates an independent variable to a dependent variable is a differential equation. Now according to the second definition, y is a dependent variable and x is independent variable here. y always depends on x and that's why we call it a dependent variable. But x does not depend on y and therefore we call it independent variable. I can also use some other notations for derivative term which is y prime y dot d sub x times y. These are just the symbols to show the derivative term. You can use any notation for derivative term. I just mentioned that y is a dependent variable and x is independent variable in this equation. But you may have equation where x is a dependent and y is independent. It's up to you. Let me show you different notations in their names for derivative term of differential equation. Notation of derivative. In equation d cube y or dx cube plus 3 times d square y or dx square plus dy or dx plus x times y equals to 0. The notations d cube y or dx cube, d square y or dx square and dy or dx are Leibniz notations. These are called Leibniz notations. y triple prime, y double prime, and y prime are called Lagrange's notations. These are Lagrange's notations for derivative term. The notations y triple dot, y double dot, and y dot are called Newton's notations. These are Newton's notations. and d sub x to the 3 times y, d sub x to the 2 times y, and d sub x times y are actually Euler's notations. These are Euler's notations. These were just different notations for derivative terms. You can use any notation, it's up to you. But normally we use d cube y or dx cube d square y or dx square and dy or dx. Sometimes you may face Lagrange's notations y triple prime, y double prime and y prime at some places. These two are the common notations that you're gonna come across. What is the difference between the order of equation and power of equation? There's a simple equation dy or dx plus 2y equals to 0. The other of the equation is actually the number of the i's derivative term. The maximum derivative of this differential equation is dy or dx. It is the first derivative term and therefore this is the first order of differential equation. But what about the power? Power is actually the power of the i's derivative term. I repeat the difference. Order of differential equation is the number of the i's derivative term. And power of the differential equation is the power of the i's derivative term. Look at here. The power of this, the power of dy of dx is 1. Look at here. dy of dx is raised to the 1. And the power of dy of dx is 1. Therefore, the power of this differential equation is 1. Let me show another differential equation and the order of this equation is first order. 
because the maximum derivative term is dy of dx, which is first derivative term. And the power of this equation is 2, because power of the equation is actually the power of the maximum derivative term. And the highest or maximum derivative term is dy of dx. It raised to the power 2. Therefore, the power of this equation is 2. Look at one more differential equation. Power of the equation is the power of the maximum derivative term. And the maximum derivative term is here, which is d square y of dx square. It is not dy of dx. This term actually raised to the power 1, not 3. So the power of this differential equation is 1. And obviously the order of this equation is, is the second order. Because the highest derivative term is d square y of dx square. So it is a second derivative term and therefore the order will be the second order for this differential equation. But the power of this equation is 1, not 3. Let me show one more differential equation with the Lagrange's notations of derivative term. The maximum derivative term is second derivative. So the order of this equation is second order. Well, the power of this equation is 2. Because the power of the equation is the power of the maximum derivative term. One more equation which is y to the 4 plus 5 times y triple prime plus y double prime plus 3y prime equals to 0. When you look at this equation, can I say that the power of this equation is 4? No, the maximum derivative term is y triple prime. It is not 4. 4 is just the power of a simple variable y. y is not a derivative term. And therefore, it is third order of differential equation because the maximum derivative term is y triple prime. It's a third derivative term. And the power of this equation is obviously 1 because y triple prime is raised to the 1, not 4. 4 was just a simple power for the variable y. Let me give one final example. y to the 4 inclusion bracket plus 5 times y triple prime plus y double prime plus 3y prime equals to 0. When I compare this equation with the previous one that I just finished, y to the 4, can I say that 4 is a simple power for the variable y? No, it is not a simple power for variable y. Because whenever you include the power inside the bracket, it shows the derivative term. It's no more a simple power for variable y. Because we enclosed it inside a small bracket. So it is a derivative symbol and therefore this equation is a fourth order differential equation. But what about the power? The power of this equation is obviously 1 because y to the 4 inside the bracket raised to 1. There is no other power. This y to the 4 inside the bracket is not a power. It is the derivative symbol, fourth order derivative, fourth derivative order. And the power of this equation is 1 because the power of the equation is actually the power of the maximum derivative term. And the maximum derivative term here is y to the 4 inside the bracket. And it raised to 1. You can also replace y triple prime by y to the 3 inside the bracket. And double prime by y to the 2 inside the bracket. And y prime by y to the 1 inside the bracket. I repeat it again. Whenever you enclose the power of a variable inside a small bracket, it is a symbol of derivative. And that is all for the order versus power of differential equation. Hopefully you got it. Homogeneous differential equation. What is homogeneous differential equation? A differential equation which has no isolated constant term and satisfies the following condition. f of t times x comma t times y equals to t to the n times f of x comma y is called homogeneous differential equation. We should check two things. The first thing is that the equation should not have any isolated constant term. All the terms must have variables are the product of variables. n is a number here, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Let's say for example I have a function f of x comma y. To know that this function is a homogeneous, what I'm gonna do here? I'm gonna multiply all the x and y variables of this function by a third variable. Let me suppose the third variable is t. 
t times x and t times y. You can take any variable, but I have supposed t. Just multiply all the x and y variables of this function by t. And then later, when I take t common, if I get back the same value f of x comma y, after taking t common, then the equation is homogeneous differential equation. Otherwise, it is non-homogeneous differential equation. You must get back the exact value of f of x comma y, where t should not be equals to zero. Let me do first order homogeneous differential equation. First order homogeneous differential equation. A homogeneous differential equation with its first derivative is first order homogeneous differential equation. Let me take an equation dy or dx equals to x plus y or x. It's a first order homogeneous differential equation because when you look to the derivative term, the maximum derivative term here is first derivative. So it is a first order homogeneous differential equation. And you can also put y prime here. One more equation, dy or dx equals to x squared times y or x to the 3 plus y to the 3. Or dy or dx equals to x squared plus y squared under the root plus y. Or dy or dx equals to x to the 3 plus x squared times y plus x times y squared. These are all the first order homogeneous differential equations. Let me do a simple test to know whether the equation is homogeneous or not. Let's suppose my function f of x comma y is x to the 3 plus x to the 2 times y. Multiply all the x and y variables by t. Always look to the power of the variables. Solve it further. t times t square is t cube. So you can see that t cube is common among both the terms. Let me take t cube common. When I take t cube common, I got this value which is the exact value of f of x comma y to satisfy this condition. But if you don't get the exact value of f of x comma y at the end, it is not a homogeneous differential equation. It will be non-homogeneous differential equation. Let me do one more test. If my function f of x comma y equals to x to the 3 plus 1 plus x squared y. Look at here. I have one isolated constant term. But what homogeneous differential equation says, homogeneous differential equation says that you should not have an isolated constant term. I have it here. So it is not a homogeneous differential equation. It is non-homogeneous differential equation. But let me complete the process. Multiply all the x and y variables by t. x to the 3 by t to the 3. I don't have any x variable here, so leave it as it is. You can only multiply the variables by t, not a constant x squared by t squared and y by t1. Solve it further. I have t to the cube at two places, where t squared times t is t cube. I don't have t cube in this term. So t cube is not common among all the three terms. But let's suppose if I want to take t cube common. Let me take it. When I took t cube common, I got this value, which is not equal to the f of x. So it doesn't satisfy this condition, and therefore it is non-homogeneous differential equation. Let me do a tutorial of first order homogeneous differential equation. Example number one. dy or dx equals to x plus y or x. Solution. Step one. To know that whether the equation is homogeneous or not, multiply the numerator and denominator by a new variable t, which is t times x, t times y, or t times x, which equals to x plus y or x. Because when you take t common from the numerator, it will cancel with the t at denominator, and you're left only with x plus y, which is the exact value of f of x comma y. So it is a homogeneous differential equation. Step 2. Change the equation into f of y or x form. dy or dx equals to f of y or x form. Why we do this? We change the equation in y or x form just for the purpose of simplification to solve it further. Multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 or x. dy or dx equals to x plus y times 1 or x or x times 1 or x. Just multiply the denominator by 1 or x and denominator by 1 or x. 
after simplification I got 1 plus y or x so that's how I got the equation in y over x form step 3 to make the equation into separable variables form we need substitution there is some substitution process to follow let y or x equals to v this implies that y equals to v times x take derivative on both sides to have dy or dx equals to x times dv or dx plus v times dx or dx dx or dx will cancel each other I have now dy or dx equals to x times dv or dx plus v so my new equation in step 3 will be x times dv or dx plus v equals to 1 plus v how we get that I replace dy or dx by x times dy or dx plus v I just got it from substitution process here and y our x by v just replace y our x by v now v at the left side will cancel with the v at the right side and my new equation is x times dv or dx equals to 1 step 4 separate the variables bring x variable at one side and v variable at another side I have no v variable at left side and x variable at the right side I just separated the variables step 5 take the integration on both sides integral of dv equals to integral of 1 or x dx integral of dv is v and integral of 1 or x is natural log x plus c now substitute back the value of v which was y or x if you remember solve it and you will get the final answer y equals to x times natural log x plus cx this is the final value let me do a tutorial of second order homogeneous differential equation example y double prime minus 4y times y prime plus 3 times y equals to 0 solution step 1 to change the equation into differential operator d square minus 4d plus 3 equals to 0 for the second derivative I put d square and for the first derivative d there is no derivative term here therefore I just put 3 here step 2 to find the roots can I factorize this equation yes I can do factorization just factorize it to have d square minus d minus 3d plus 3 equals to 0 solve the equation and finally I got d sub 1 equals to 1 and d sub 2 equals to 3 these are the roots that I got in step 2 step 3 there are certain roots that we discussed in the previous lecture if the root is real and d sub 1 is not equal to d sub 2 then I'm going to use this equation if the root is real and d sub 1 equals to d sub 2 then I'm going to use this equation but if the root is complex root then I'm going to use this equation look at here my d sub 1 equals to 1 and d sub 2 equals to 3 so d sub 1 is not equal to d sub 2 therefore I'm going to take this equation which is y equals to c sub 1 times e to the d sub 1x plus c sub 2 times e to the d sub 2x substitute the value of d sub 1 and d sub 2 the value of d sub 1 is 1 and the value of d sub 2 is 3 yeah, this is the final value in step 3 y equals to c sub 1 times e to the x plus c sub 2 times e to the 3x that's how we solve second order homogeneous differential equation if the roots are different in the previous session I taught you second order homogeneous differential equation now I'm gonna teach you non-homogeneous differential equation second order non-homogeneous differential equation it is also a linear differential equation but second order linear differential equation it comes under non-homogeneous category but let me first explain that what is second order non-homogeneous differential equation a non-homogeneous differential equation which has second order of its maximum derivative is called second order non-homogeneous differential equation 
If a non-homogeneous differential equation has maximum second order derivative term, it is a second order non-homogeneous differential equation. But there is a special condition that you must remember for second order non-homogeneous differential equation. The condition is that in second order non-homogeneous differential equation, the right hand side is set to any constant variable or their product. If you remember in second order homogeneous differential equation, at right hand side we had zero, but in second order non-homogeneous differential equation we don't have zero. There must be some sort of function at the right hand side. Let me show a typical form of second order non-homogeneous differential equation in the next lecture. Mathematical representation of second order non-homogeneous differential equation. The typical form of this equation is y double prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x times y equals to g of x. It is a typical form of second order non-homogeneous differential equation where the left hand side is set to any function of x. When I compare is with the second order homogeneous differential equation. In second order homogeneous differential equation we had zero at the right side. But in second order non-homogeneous differential equation we have any function. Any function of x or a constant. This is the main difference between second order homogeneous differential equation and second order non-homogeneous differential equation. These both equations are linear differential equation, but second order linear differential equation. One comes under homogeneous category and the other comes under non-homogeneous category. For, non -ho for second order non-homogeneous differential equation, at the right side, we may have any x variable constant or any term that involve x variable. Can I put d square y or dx square for the second derivative and dy or dx for the first derivative? Yes. It's just the notation that we put there. Look at here. The independent variable is x here and that is the reason we must have x variable at the right hand side. At any term that involve x, we should not put y variable there because y is a dependent variable. Let me put some values at right side. We may have x to the n power like x, x to the 2, x to the 3, 2x, 5, which is a constant, 3 plus x square. Let me give you a typical example of second order non-homogeneous differential equation, which is y double prime plus 4 times y prime plus 4y equals to 3x plus 2. These are double derivative terms and p of x is 4 and q of x is also 4. g of x is 3x plus 2. That's how a second order non-homogeneous differential equation looks like. Let me do a tutorial of second order non-homogeneous differential equation. Example y double prime plus 4 times y prime plus 4 times y equals to 3x plus 2. Solution. From the typical formula of second order non-homogeneous differential equation, y double prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x times y equals to g of x, it's a typical form of second order non-homogeneous differential equation. Let me compare the given expression. Look at the left side. The maximum derivative term is second derivative and therefore it is a second order equation which equals to 3x plus 2. It is a g of x. So it is a second order non-homogeneous differential equation. Step 1. Write the above function into differential operator form. To do so, let me pick the left side y double prime plus 4 times y prime plus 4 times y. Just pick the left side. Change it into differential operator which is d squared plus 4d plus 4 equals to 0. How I change the equation into d squared plus 4d plus 4 equals to 0. Let me repeat it again. Can I write y double prime equals to d square or dx square? And it equals to d square. y prime equals to d or dx. It equals to d. That's how we put d square plus 4d. Step 2. To find the roots, there are two ways to find the roots. One is simple factorization process and the other is quadratic equation. Look at the equation in step 1, d squared plus 4d plus 4 equals to 0. Is it possible to simply factorize it? Yes, we can factorize it. Just simply do factorization, which equals to d plus 2 times d plus 2 equals to 0. Simplify it further, you will get d sub 1 equals to minus 2 and d sub 2 equals to minus 2. 
these are the two roads that we got in step two. Step three, to find the complementary solution. If you remember the previous topic, second order homogeneous differential equation. For step three, I have shown you some rules to follow. Let me repeat that rules. Rule number one, if the root is real and d sub one is not equal to d sub two, yeah, and then you're gonna put this equation. If the root is real and d sub one equals to d sub two, then you're gonna put this equation. And in case, if the root is complex root, in this form, t sub one plus minus i t sub two, then you're gonna pick this equation. These are the exact rules that we applied for second order homogeneous differential equation in previous topic. Now look at here. My d sub one equals to minus two, and d sub two is also minus two. So d sub one equals to d sub two. And therefore I'm gonna pick this equation. Y equals to c sub one plus c sub two times x into e to the d sub one x. Substitute the value of d sub one, which is minus two. And solve it further. This is the final complementary solution. Y sub c equals to c sub one plus c sub two times x into e to the minus two x. Now, as we have seen from start till to this, everything is similar as we have done for second order homogeneous differential equation in previous topic. These are exactly similar as they are for second order homogeneous differential equation. But the process onward this is different. We have an extra step which is step four to find the particular solution. Step number four to find the particular solution y sub b. From a typical second order non-homogeneous differential equation y double prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x times y equals to g of x. Let me show you the conditions here. Number one, if the g of x is any linear polynomial degree one, then I'm gonna use this equation. Let's suppose g of x is any linear polynomial degree one. It means that the power of the variable is one, like x, two x, x over two. Pick this characteristic equation y sub b equals to a x plus b. This is the characteristic. This is called characteristic equation. Condition number two. If g of x is any quadratic polynomial degree two, then I'm going to use this equation. Let's suppose g of x at the right side. You have to look to the right side of the equation. Then you decide the appropriate characteristic equation. g of x is degree two here. The power of the variable is two like x square three x square then i'm gonna use this equation y sub b equals to ax square plus bx plus c condition number three if g of x is any cubic polynomial i mean degree three then i'm gonna use this equation let's suppose g of x is any cubic polynomial i mean the power of the variable is three like uh, four cube x cube then I will pick this equation y sub equals to x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus e. Condition number four. If g of x is any constant value, then you need this equation y sub b equals to a. Let's suppose g of x is any constant like one, five, then I will use y sub b equals to a. Condition number five. If g of x is any exponential function e to the x, then you need this equation. Let's suppose g of x is any exponential function like e to the x or two times e to the x square or e to the x square. Then I will need this equation y sub b equals to a times e to the x to be used. Condition number six. If g of x is any trigonometric function, then use this equation. Suppose that g of x is any trigonometric function like sine x cos x. Then you're gonna use this expression y sub equals to a cos ax plus b sine ax. Always look to the right side g of x. And the next thing is that if the equation is second order then differentiate y sub b which is a characteristic equation two times y sub p is the characteristics equation. These all are the characteristics equations. If the given expression is second order, 
Then you're gonna differentiate the relevant characteristic equation two times. If the equation is third order, then you need to differentiate it three times. Suppose that g of x is x square. It's a quadratic polynomial. It is degree two. I will pick this equation y sub equals to x square plus bx plus c. This is the way first thing in step four to check. The next thing is to look to the left side of the given expression. If the equation is second order, then you need to differentiate the characteristic equation y sub p two times. If it is third order, then you need to differentiate it three times. Since the maximum derivative term in the given expression is second derivative term, it is a second order equation. Therefore, I'm going to differentiate y sub p two times. So let's differentiate y sub p. y sub p prime equals to 2ax plus b. Differentiate y prime now, which is y sub p double prime equals to 2a. And I'm going to stop it here because the maximum derivative term is y double prime. Now substitute the values of the characteristic equation for the left side. For y double prime, put the value of 2a. Just replace y double prime by 2a. Yeah, and for y prime, put the value 2ax plus b. Just replace y prime by this value. And for y, substitute the value ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, in case if the given equation is a third order non-homogeneous differential equation, then I'm going to differentiate the characteristic equation y sub p three times. Let's suppose the given expression equals to x to the three. The very first thing in step four to check for the right side, which is g of x. If you see the g of x is x to the three, it is a cubic polynomial because it has degree 3. And therefore, I'm going to pick this equation. y sub p equals to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus e. This is the first thing. The next step is to check the right side of the given expression. Look at here. The maximum derivative term is third derivative term. So it is a third order non-homogeneous differential equation. Therefore, I need the characteristic equation to be differentiated three times. Differentiate y sub p to have y sub p prime equals to 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. Now differentiate y sub p prime to have y sub p double prime equals to 6ax plus 2b. Differentiate y sub p double prime which equals to y sub p triple prime equals to 6a. And I need to stop it here because the maximum derivative term is the third derivative term. Substitute 6a for the y double prime and 6ax plus b for the y double prime. 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c for y prime and ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus e for y. Let's go back to our own equation which was y double prime plus 4 times y prime plus 4y equals to 3x plus 2. Compare it with the second order non-homogeneous differential equation. There's a second order derivative terms and p of x is 4 q of x is also 4, g of x is 3x plus 2. The rule says that if the given equation is second order, then differentiate the characteristic equation y sub p two times. But the very first thing in step 4 to do is to check the right side of the equation, which is 3x plus 2. It's linear polynomial function with degree 1 power. So therefore, I will pick this equation y sub p equals to ax plus b. Now I will check the left side of the equation. And the maximum derivative term here is second derivative term. And therefore, I need to differentiate the characteristic equation y sub p equals to ax plus b two times. Differentiate y sub p to have y sub p prime equals to a. And now differentiate y sub p prime to have y sub p double prime equals to zero. Now substitute these values in the left side. For y double prime, I put 0. And for y prime, I put a. For y, I put ax plus b. Simplify the equation to have 4ax plus 4a plus 4b equals to 3x plus 2. Now I need the value of a and b. To find the value of a and b, I'm going to compare the left side with the right side. At both sides, we have x variable with degree 1 power. 
therefore the constant 4a equals to 3 which implies that a equals to 3 or 4 this is the value of a now to find the value of b check it here 4a plus 4b this is pure constant term and check it with a pure constant term at the right side at the right side we have 2 so 4a plus 4b equals to 2 substitute the value of a here to have b equals to minus 1 over 4 that's how I got the value of a and b therefore particular solution y sub equals to ax plus b y sub equals to ax plus b is the characteristic equation that has been taken now substitute the value of a and b the value of a was 3 over 4 and the value of b was minus 1 over 4 this is the final answer of the particular solution which is 3 over 4x minus 1 over 4 step 5 to find the general solution for the general solution add y sub c and y sub b y sub c is a complementary solution if you remember that is the answer that we got in step 3 and y sub b is obviously 3 over 4x minus 1 over 4 just add y sub c and y sub b y sub c was c sub 1 plus c sub 2 times x into e to the minus 2x this is the answer in step 3 put the exact answer here 3 over 4 times x minus 1 over 4 is the value of y sub b so here is the final answer for the equation and that's all Partial differential equation versus ordinary differential equation. This is typical partial differential equation. Function f has two independent variables x and y. First differentiate f with respect to x to have partial f or partial x equals to 2x. Differentiation of f with respect to x is 2x. Now differentiate the function f with respect to y to have partial f or partial y equals to 3y square. Differentiation of f with respect to y is 3y square. You can also put f sub y for the partial derivative sign. Now when it comes to ordinary differential equation, the typical form of ordinary differential equation is f of x equals to x square. There is one independent variable which is x. Differentiation of f with respect to x is df of dx equals to 2x. Function f with respect to x is 2x here. Similarly, function of y equals to y to the 3. Here the independent variable is y. Differentiation of f with respect to y. But when you draw it graphically, this is x-axis and here is y-axis. If the independent variable is x for the ordinary differential equation, the direction of the function is along x-axis only. If the independent variable is y, then it will be directed along y-axis only. That is no 3D form. So it is different compared to the partial differentiation. Let me do a tutorial of partial differential equation up to third derivative term. Example, f equals to x to the 3 plus y to the 3 minus 3a square times x square times y square minus 4x square times y. Solution. Differentiate the function f with respect to x first and the variable x exists at three places. Just differentiate these terms with respect to x to have f sub x equals to 3x square minus 6a square times xy square minus 8xy. Ignore y to the 3 because there is no x variable. My independent variable is x. Now take this function and differentiate it again with respect to y. These are the terms with y variable, so just differentiate them with respect to y to have f sub y equals to 3y square minus 6a square times x square times y minus 4x square. Ignore x to the 3 because there is no y variable. Until now the function has been differentiated up to first order and now go for the second order. Take f sub x and differentiate it first with respect to x. These are the x variable terms. Just differentiate them with respect to x. Differentiation of f sub x with respect to x is 6x minus 6a squared times y squared minus 8y. And then differentiate it with respect to y. The variables y exist at two places. Differentiate these terms with respect to y. Differentiation of f sub x with respect to y is minus 12a squared times xy minus. Now take f sub y, differentiate it first with respect to x. 
these are the terms with the x variables just differentiate them with respect to x differentiation of f sub y with respect to x is minus 12a squared times xy minus 8x and then differentiate it with respect to y y variables are at two places just differentiate them with respect to y to have f sub double y differentiation of f sub y with respect to y is 6y minus 6a squared times x squared so we have done with the second order. Now I'm going to go for the third order. For the third order, take f sub double x and differentiate it with respect to x first. This is the x term. Just differentiate it with respect to x to have f sub triple x. Differentiation of f sub double x with respect to x is minus 6. And then differentiate it with respect to y. y variables exist in two terms. Just differentiate them with respect to y to have f sub double x y. Differentiation of f sub double x with respect to y is minus 12a squared times y minus 8. Now take f sub x y, differentiate it first with respect to x. The variables x exist in both terms, just differentiate them with respect to x to have f sub x y x. Differentiation of f sub x y with respect to x is minus 12a squared times y minus 8. And then differentiate it with respect to y. Just differentiate with respect to y to have f sub x y y. Differentiation of f sub x y with respect to y is minus 12 a squared times x. Now take this one. Differentiate f sub y x first with respect to x. Both the terms have x variables. Just differentiate them with respect to x to have f sub y double x. Differentiation of f sub y x with respect to x is minus 12 a squared times y minus 8. And then with respect to y. This is the term with the y variable. Just differentiate with respect to y to have f sub y x y. Differentiation of f sub y x with respect to y is minus 12 a squared times x. Now take this one and differentiate f sub double y with respect to x first. x variable is here. Just differentiate it with respect to x to have f sub double y x. And then differentiate it with respect to y. This is the term with the y variable. Just differentiate it with respect to y to have f sub triple y equals to minus 6. Differentiation of f sub double y with respect to y is minus 6. And that's all. It is a process up to third order. Now look at here. f sub x y equals to f sub y x. They have similar values minus 12 a square times x y minus 8 x. But in some cases you may have similar values in the third order as we have them here similarly for here and also here and that's all for the higher order partial differentiation one more tutorial of a separable differential equation example x dy equals to y dx solution again look at here x variable is with the dy and y variable is with the dx Step 1. Separate the variables. Divide both sides of this equation by x to have dy equals to y or x dx. And again, divide both sides of this equation by y to have 1 or y dy equals to 1 or x dx. Now it is in a perfect separable form. Step 2. Take integration on both sides of this equation to have integral of 1 or y dy equals to integral of 1 or x dx. After integration, I have natural log y equals to natural log x plus c. Similarly, look at here. I put only arbitrary constant to the right side. You may have to the left side, but I don't need it. Now, take exponential function on both sides of the above equation to have e to the natural log y equals to e to the natural log x plus c. Since the power of this exponential has addition, we can make its product to have e to the c. That is a logarithmic rule that uh, e will cancel with the natural log and similarly e will cancel with the natural log here to have y equals to x times c. If for e to the c we can only put c to have y equals to x times c. We apply this logarithmic rule e to the natural log a equals to a. This e will cancel with the natural log to have only a. Therefore after applying this rule I left only with the y and same here with the x e to the c has been shifted in c. As I said earlier that it is an arbitrary constant, it doesn't affect its value. Whether you take its addition, whether you take its product, whether you take its division, it's only an arbitrary constant. 
So this is the final value, y equals to cx. Example, x squared dy equals to y to the 4dx solution. Look at here, the x variable is with the dy and y variable is with the dx. They are mixed into each other. Step 1, to separate the variables. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is to separate the variables x and y from each other. And the standard way to do so, divide both sides of this equation by x square first. To have dy equals to y to the 4 or x square dx. So x to the square has been kicked out from the left side. And repeat the same process, divide both sides of this equation by y to the 4. To have 1 over y to the 4 dy equals to 1 over x squared dx. And y to the 4 has been shifted to the left side. When you look to the left side, the y variable is with the dy at one side. And x variable is with the dx at another side. Because y to the 4 has been shifted to the left side and x squared has been shifted to the right side. Now the equation is in a perfect separable form. Step 2. Take integration on both sides of the above equation to have integral of 1 over y to the 4 dy equals to integral of 1 over x squared dx. I can only have arbitrary constant at one side to the right side. I don't need e to the left side because it is an arbitrary constant. You can only put one. But technically you can put arbitrary constant to the both sides because both sides involve integration but we can replace them by only one to the right side because it is arbitrary constant. Arbitrary constant doesn't affect if you take its product or if you take it in a negative form or in division form. It doesn't affect the arbitrary constant. Ultimately, it is an arbitrary constant. And therefore, we can only have arbitrary constant to the left side. So this is the final answer for the given equation. Let me show you the procedure how to solve a typical Bernoulli's differential equation. Steps to solve Bernoulli's differential equation. Here is the standard form of Bernoulli's differential equation. y prime plus p of x times y equals to q of x times y to the n. You may sometimes see dy or dx for the y prime. Let me give you an example. y prime minus x times y equals to minus x times y to the 3. To do perfect match with the standard form, you can put plus here. Minus x is the p of x and q of x is also minus x. y to the 3 is y to the n. Reduce the equation into standard linear form and the standard linear form is y prime plus p of x times y equals to q of x. I'm gonna do some substitution and some extra calculation. To get the new equation z prime plus 2x times z equals to 2x. This is the new equation and when you match it with the standard form I have no issue with the derivative term here. They both have first derivative term. P of x is 2x and Q of x is 2x. Now the equation is in a perfect linear form. Step 2. To find the integral factor. Integral factor i equals to e to the integral of P of x dx. Substitute the value of P of x which is 2x. After doing integration, integral factor equals to e to the x square. Step 3. Find the general solution. The formula for the general solution is y equals to 1 over integral factor times integral of integral factor times q of x dx plus c. Just substitute the value of integral factor here and q of x plus arbitrary constant. Don't forget it. After substitution, the equation is y equals to 1 over e to the x square times integral of e to the x square times 2x dx plus c. We substituted the value of integral factor which is e to the x square and 2x is the qx. Continue the process till to the end to get the final value for the general solution. Look at here, when I compare Bernoulli's differential equation with the linear differential equation, the only difference is the step 1. This is the extra step that we have in Bernoulli's differential equation. And the rest of the steps, step 2, step 3, are exactly similar to the linear differential equation. Let me do a complete tutorial of Bernoulli's differential equation in the next lecture. Example number 1. y prime plus x times y equals to x times y to the 2. Solution. It's a perfect Bernoulli's differential equation. Compare it with the standard formula. 
you can put y prime here p of x is x and q of x is also x y square is y to the n and the first thing that I'm going to do here to reduce the Bernoulli differential equation into standard linear form and what is the procedure to change it into standard linear form there is a procedure just follow that divide both sides by y to the 2 uh, to have y to the minus 2 times y prime plus x times y to the minus 1 equals to x let's suppose y to the minus 1 equals to z yeah, and take derivative on both sides to have z prime equals to minus y to the minus 2 times y prime this y prime is because of the chain rule separate the variables to have y to the minus 2 times y prime equals to minus z prime replace this y to the minus 2 times y prime by minus z prime and also y to the minus 1 by z multiply both sides by negative to have z prime minus x times z equals to minus x and this is the perfect standard linear differential equation that we just got after substitution it's a new equation compare it with the standard linear form we have no issue with the derivative and p of x is minus x q of x is minus x and the process onward this is exactly similar that we had for a linear standard form of differential equation in the previous topic just follow that way step 2 find the integral factor integral factor equals to e to the integral of p of x dx substitute the value of p of x which is minus x and integrate minus x with respect to x to have e to the minus x square out to this is the integral factor that we got step 2 to find the general solution z equals to 1 over integral factor times integral of integral factor times q of x dx plus c substitute the value of integral factor and uh, which is e to the minus x square over 2 and obviously the value of qx which is minus x now I'm going to integrate e to the minus x square over 2 times minus x dx it's not easy to directly integrate e to the minus x square over 2 times minus x dx let me do some substitutions here take minus x square over 2 equals to u take derivative on both sides to have du equals to minus x dx now replace minus x square over 2 by u and minus x dx by du so the new equation is z equals to 1 over e to the u times integral of e to the u du plus c integrate e to the u after integration I got z equals to 1 over e to the u times e to the u plus c integral of e to the u is e to the u substitute back the value of u here which was minus x square over 2 push this e to the minus x square over 2 term to the denominator to have z equals to e to the plus x square over 2 times e to the minus x square over 2 plus c can I add the power x square over 2 to minus x square over 2 yes because they both have similar bases they both have base e after addition I got e to the 0 x square over 2 minus x square over 2 equals to e to the 0 the value of e to the 0 is 1 so I have z equals to 1 plus c times e to the x square over 2 and now it is the time to finish z variable substitute back the value of y here for the z if you remember we had supposed y to the minus 1 equals to z in step 1 now I need it back substitute z equals to y to the minus 1 y to the minus 1 equals to 1 over y equals to 1 plus c we don't need c times e to the x square over 2 you can remove the term e to the x square over 2 because it is an arbitrary constant whatever way do you multiply or divide or add to the arbitrary constant ultimately it is an arbitrary constant and it equals to c so we don't need e to the x square over 2 with the c rearrange it so here is the final value of general solution y equals to 1 over 1 plus c and that's all well let me do an alternate technique for step 3 let me do an alternate method for the previous problem that I did 
Example number one y prime plus x times y equals to x times y to the 2. Solution. It's a Bernoulli's differential equation and from a standard form of Bernoulli's equation p of x is x and q of x is also x. y to the 2 is y to the n. Change it into linear standard form. Divide both sides by y to the 2 to have y to the minus 2 times y prime plus x times y to the minus 1 equals to x. Let's suppose y to the minus 1 equals to z. Do derivative on both sides to have z prime equals to minus y to the minus 2 times y prime. This y prime is because of the chain rule. Separate the variables to have y to the minus 2 times y prime equals to minus z prime. Now replace y to the minus 2 times y prime by minus z prime. And obviously y to the minus 1 by z. Multiply both sides by negative, and now it is a perfect linear standard form. It is a new equation that we got after substitution. From a standard form of linear differential equation, here is derivative term p of x is minus x, and q of x is also minus x. Step 2 to find the integral factor. Integral factor equals to e to the integral of p of x dx. Substitute the value of p of x, which is minus x. Integrate minus x. Here is the final value for integral factor. i equals to e to the minus x square out 2. This is integral factor. Step 2 to find the general solution. The process on what this is different compared to the technique that we did in the previous problem. Here I'm going to multiply the new equation z prime minus x times z equals to minus x by the integral factor e to the minus x square out 2. e to the minus x square out 2 is the integral factor. The multiplication, I have no e to the minus x square out 2 times e equals to minus x times e to the minus x square out 2. Let me compare the left side with the product rule. We have a product rule where u times v equals to u times dv of dx plus du of dx times v. There's a product rule u times v. Compare the left side with the product rule. u is e to the minus x square out 2 times dv equals to z prime plus du of dx equals to minus x times e to the minus x square out 2 times v equals to z. This is the product rule. That's how we compare the product rule with the left side. Now, can I write this term equals to the derivative of e to the minus x square over 2 times z? Yes, I can. Now, take integration on both sides. After integration, I have integral of derivative of e to the minus x square over 2 times z equals to integral of minus x times e to the minus x square over 2 dx. Integration will cancel with the derivative d or dx. They will cancel each other. And I left with e to the minus x square over 2 times z equals to integral of e to the minus x square over 2 times minus x dx plus c. Again, to integrate e to the minus x square over 2, let me do some substitution. Let minus x square over 2 equals to u. Take derivative on both sides to have du equals to minus x dx. Replace minus x square over 2 by u and minus x dx by du. So the new equation is e to the minus x square over 2 times z equals to integral of e to the u du plus c. Integral of e to the u is actually e to the u. Substitute back the value of u. Uh, so I have now e to the minus x square over 2 times z equals to e to the minus x square over 2 plus c. Now divide both sides by e to the minus x square over 2. Simplify this expression to have z equals to 1 plus c times e to the x square over 2. So substitute back the value of y that we had supposed in step 1. y to the minus 1 equals to 1 plus c. That was the value that we had supposed in step 1 to make it linear. Rearrange the term and here is the final solution for the general solution which is y equals to 1 over 1 plus c. And this was an alternate method for step 3. You can opt into any method. It's up to you.
Example number two. 2y primes times natural log x plus y or x equals to y to the minus 1 times cos x. Solution. It's a perfect Bernoulli's differential equation. From a standard form of Bernoulli's equation, you can put y prime here. So y to the minus 1 is actually y to the n here. Step 1. To reduce the equation into standard linear form. This is the first thing that we do here. So let me do the process to change it into linear form. Divide both sides by y to the minus 1. To have y times y prime plus y to the 2 out 2x times natural log x equals to cos x out 2 natural log x. Let's suppose y to the 2 equals to z. Take derivative on both sides, z prime equals to 2y times y prime. y prime is because of chain rule. After separating the variables, I have now y times y prime equals to z prime over 2. Just replace y times y prime by z prime over 2 here. And obviously y to the 2 by 1. Multiply both sides by 2. To have z prime plus z times 1 over x natural log x equals to cos x over natural log x. And now I got the linear differential equation. This is a linear differential equation. It is no more nonlinear. Compare it with the standard form of linear equation. This is derivative term and uh, p of x is 1 over x times natural log x. q of x is cos x or natural log x. Step 2 to find the integral factor. Integral factor equals to e to the integral of p of x dx. Substitute the value of p of x which is 1 over x natural log x. Can I write 1 over x natural log x equals to 1 over x or natural log x? Yes, I can. How I can change 1 over x natural log x to 1 over x or natural log x? Let me do here. 1 over x natural log x equals to 1 over x or natural log x. How we can prove that? equals to 1 over x or natural log x or 1. If I write 1 under natural log x, so to change it into product form, this natural log x or 1 will flip in the opposite way. Uh, I can write 1 over x times 1 over natural log x. So that's how it equals to 1 over x natural log x. So that's how it equals to 1 over x natural log x. It's simple as that. e to the integral of 1 over x or natural log x equals to e to the natural log x times natural log x. There is a simple logarithmic rule that this base e will cancel with the natural log x and we are only left with natural log x. So here is the final value for integral factor i equals to natural log x. Step 3 to find the general solution which is y equals to 1 over integral factor times integral of integral factor times q of x dx plus c. Since we have supposed z variable for the y, and therefore it is better to write z. z equals to 1 over integral factor times integral of integral factor times q of x dx plus c. Substitute the value of integral factor, which is natural log x. Yeah, natural log x is the integral factor that we got in step 1. And obviously, q of x is cos x or natural log x. This natural log x will cancel with the natural log x. And we're left with the integral of cos x dx only. After integration, I have now z equals to 1 over natural log x times sin x plus c. Because the integration of cos x is sin x. Now I want to substitute back the value of y for z which was supposed in step 1. So just replace z by y square. Take under the root on both sides. And this is the final answer for the general solution, which is y equals to 1 over natural log x times sine x plus c.